I'm Michelle Westby and I'm a stunt driver for Fast and Furious Live. So I've always been into cars ever since I was a little girl. Um, I was one of them that was playing with Hot Wheels, Scale Electrics, um, wasn't that interested in Barbie dolls. So I kind of had a, a natural love for cars at an early age for no particular reason really. So this is my Nissan S14A. I'm currently running the standard SR engine still, but with an upgraded Owen Developments Turbo. I'm also running um, extra lock on the front, built and designed by Garage D. I'm also running the Meister R coilovers as well. Inside you'll see I've got safety features, so I've got the roll cage, the bucket seats and the harness, but other than that, she's pretty standard. As I got older, I started to go to car shows, car events. Um, I knew the minute I was 16 and uh, could start learning to drive, I was out there learning to drive. Um, and then from that I kind of progressed and um, started to do a few track days and stuff. And uh, it was at a track day I actually got asked to work a car show event and um, being a bit of a tomboy I thought this is sort of more modelling, I can't do this. Um, and I kind of was kind of fobbing it off at first and um, the guy managed to convince me in the end because he said it would be paid work and he's like, why wouldn't you take on a paid job to be at a car show that you'd usually pay to get in? And I was like, mm, okay, good point. <laughs> so um, I took on this job and um, luckily from there I got offered more and more promotional work which was great for two different reasons. First of all, for the fact that I'm around cars more, I was learning more about racing, different car makes and stuff. And uh, also I think it got me a chance to save more um, to then potentially buy or build a car that was going to be a dream car. From that I actually then was asked to work at um, the European Drifting Championship. So it's being a grid gal and um, turning up I saw all the Japanese cars and I love Japanese cars. To me cars should be all about the character behind them and uh, most Jap cars have that nice evil eyed look which I just I love. Um, so first of all when I was there and I saw these cars, uh, the big engine noises, uh, the smell of like kind of petrol fumes and stuff, I, I was in my element and to think I was getting paid to work there oh, it was a dream really. And um, as I got to learn the rules throughout the day and saw some of the twin in action, so when two cars are actually drifting together, I thought this was phenomenal. This is like the cars that I love and um, the body kits and everything on them and then watching them, just it's a spectacular to kind of see a car drifting sideways with all the smoke and the skill that's involved to be having close proximity to each other as well. So after seeing drifting for the first time, I realised it's definitely something I wanted to try and pursue myself. Um, so got a little bit of advice from the drivers and they said to try out an experience day, which is something I'd done at Santa Pod. So just literally turned up and you um, use one of the driving instructor's cars and you kind of learn the real basics, but you got like 15 minutes in a car, which isn't long enough to really gain the skills that you kind of want when you leave. So it was a bit of a teaser, but from that, I then actually got advised to do a full day and um, got offered through a friend actually who took me down to a Drift What You Brung day. And literally from then I was hooked. I felt like I picked it up quite quick. Um, all I wanted to do was learn more and kind of be working up to the big tracks and stuff as well. Knowing I couldn't obviously use this poor guy's car all the time, um, I went and pursued my own car. So I got advice from everyone what to get. Um, Garage D actually helped me source a car, which was the S14A, same car as what I've got now and doing the very basic modifications and just basically taught myself then at Drift What You Brung Day. So it's just days where you can bring your own car and you're kind of self-teaching yourself. Um, obviously people are on standby to give you advice, but it's all about learning and feeling the car yourself. There's only so much advice someone can give you, but it's, it's the more seat time you have, the more experience you get. So drifting isn't as easy as it looks. Um, I think starting off just doing the basic donuts, um, it's just learning about throttle control really. So I'd say that's probably not the most complex part. Pick that up quite quick. But learning transitions and then obviously more speed into second gear and third gear stuff, um, you really need to be on the ball and really feel in the car. So I thought I was doing quite well at Santa Pod Raceway, um, but the big track actually involves third gear. So it's a lot of commitment um, and quite a big step, I think, from second to third in the speed. This is where, unfortunately, um, something went quite wrong. So on the big track, I was trying out third gear. Um, done it a couple of times, fine, but I was working on my line, so getting a bit of a wider line. And um, that's when actually I hit a dip and an automatic reaction for myself was to let off the throttle, which was the worst thing to do. But unfortunately, I wasn't experienced enough to know that at the time and uh, my car actually gripped and threw me into a concrete wall which led to the car being a complete write-off. 
as you can imagine, my dreams felt like they just ended there and then. Um, everyone come over, they told me the car was a write-off, it wasn't really repairable. And after working so, so hard um, in saving for a car, getting the basic modifications, going down and really feel like I was getting somewhere, to have that feeling of a massive step back was gutting. Like, I literally was, I think, in tears all the way home because I just thought I haven't got the money to start again. I literally just thought my hopes and dreams were over there and then. So obviously with this really big setback, um, I didn't really know how I was going to get back into drifting. I didn't want to be spending another year saving for a car and then another year to actually be able to get it back out on track. Um, so I was probably lowest of my low at that time and uh, Garage D saw that, but the good thing was they saw potential in me. So Julian Smith, who runs Garage D, was willing to help and get me back out on track. He actually offered um, to do the rebuild for free if I could find a new shell or a new car, um, as long as he could get some kind of advertisement or publicity from it. And then the modelling obviously worked out well because I had contacts with magazines and stuff. So Fast Car actually come on board and they'd done a feature on the whole rebuild. So went searching high and low for a car because this gave me the kind of spirit or lift up lift that I needed. Um, but then that was a difficult part is trying to find another black 14A was very, very difficult. So um, searching high and low from as far as Ireland, Germany, France, Europe, even looking in Japan in the end, and I could not find one that was standard or in good condition. So um, starting to panic, it was so surreal that someone at work who wasn't even really into their cars uh, gave me a text one day saying, oh, Michelle, I think someone next door is selling the car that you need and want. And I thought, this guy doesn't even know about cars. It's probably not going to be the right one. But OK, send me a picture and this Oh, amazing looking S14A come through on my phone and I could not believe it. I literally said to him straight away, please get the contact details, I need this car. So I just felt like it was meant to be, the luck of it being literally only five minutes away from me as well when I was searching what felt like the world. So um, yeah, I went down, managed to buy this car, went straight to Garage D with it. There was me thinking it's going to take years to get back into drifting, yet all of a sudden, just a month later, I managed to find a new car. And just a couple of weeks after that, I, we'd managed to set up this whole feature to rebuild the car and it was done in 12 hours. So within two months, I was back out on track, whereas I thought it was going to be years. And um, so the first actual safety wear that I uh, received were these racing boots. Reason being, I was actually at uh, Santa Pod Raceway drifting and someone caught me drifting barefoot. Now I know that sounds really bad, but I just like being able to feel the pedals. Um, and so once I got caught, someone advised me to get some race boots. And I was very lucky and honored that uh, someone that was sponsoring me at the time actually purchased these for me. And it was the best thing that could have ever happened because obviously for safety, you need shoes on your feet. And um, being supple, they uh, actually were perfect for me. Um, second one, obviously being helmet. Um, again, massive safety feature. Um, I've actually customized this one a little bit. So um, I'm a bit of a Bon Jovi fan. <laughs> so I've actually got one of the logos there with my name and a, a saying that I love, which is living in sin, which is probably one of my favorite song lyrics as well. So uh, a bit sad, but I love it. <laughs> From there, when my car was rebuilt and, and ready to go back out on track, I started going just to practice days again, trying to build my confidence back. Um, because I was so scared of writing off the car, it took me a while, I'd say, to get confidence back on giving it 110%. Um, but I'd say probably after a year, I started to feel really settled again, started to learn to twin with other drivers. And it got to the point where I kind of wanted to push myself more. Um, I mean, it's good fun being at track days, but I kind of wanted to see how good I was compared to other drivers. And someone advised me then that the new series called Drift Cup was starting and uh, why not give it a go? So I thought, throw myself in the deep end, why not? Let's see what happens. So um, I actually started competing in Drift Cup. It was just three rounds and um, I wasn't the best, don't get me wrong, there was a lot more experienced drivers, but I was certainly, I think about top eight I finished in that year. So for my first time with um, a few drivers, that was kind of good enough for myself, but I obviously was hungry for more. So the year after Drift Cup then was taken more seriously, it went up to a five round series. Um, unfortunately, money didn't allow me to compete in the whole series that year, but I think I'd done the first four rounds and I could see the progression there. 2016 I decided I really wanted to take this seriously and really go for it. Um, I thought now I've got the potential to do quite well and I wanted to challenge myself and see where I could come. My full 
first season of competing, um, I couldn't tell you how nervous I was. I literally felt physically sick, I think, <laughs> on the start line. Um, I felt a lot more pressure as well because suddenly I wanted to prove a point to myself but also others because um, I never really felt ready but I just wanted to push myself as hard as I could. But yeah, being on the start line, like I, I wasn't even smiling about drifting anymore because I was so nervous and uh, I think the adrenaline rush after is the best feeling in the world but at the time it was just pure nerves, that was, like, that was all. <laughs> The first round I actually qualified quite high, um, off the top of my head I think it was around about 8th, um, so I was happy with that, but then lost my first battle, but it was a learning curve, I hadn't really done much twinning and I felt like every time I got to battle someone I was progressing, but unfortunately a small error meant that I didn't go through. So round 2 was at Norfolk Arena. Um, this time I actually wasn't as nervous, but reason being I actually had some issues with my car, so I kind of uh, admitted defeat before I'd even got there. But the good thing about that is I didn't overthink the situation, I think I went out a lot calmer than I usually do. So um, I qualified again, kind of middle pack, so nothing special, but it kind of got me out there into the battles. And I think where I went out assuming I'd already going to lose because I knew I had power issues, I was just so much more relaxed and I actually then managed to win my first battle which is something I hadn't achieved yet. So um, kind of coming off the finishing line and having the marshal point at me saying you're through was the best feeling in the world. Like it's just something I'd aimed for so much. I was so used to qualifying well but just always being knocked out the top 32 which was so frustrating. So to get that moment of you're through was the best feeling ever, driving off, everyone clapping and applauding you. Um, I was over the moon, especially because I didn't even expect to probably qualify that day, to be honest. After winning top 32, um, I kept winning each battle and I went from top 16 to top 8. And then I think it was um, top 4 that I suddenly just kind of paused for a second in the car and I had my mechanics around me. And I was like, what's going on? Where am I? And they're like, you're just about to line up for the final. And I'm like, you what, so I'm on the podium? And they're like, yeah, no matter what, you're on the podium now. And I literally couldn't believe it. I think then I just, honestly, my whole world was just kind of suddenly lifted in the air. And um, I went out for that final battle, um, which was, there, was then for first or second place. And uh, I'd lost that one, but literally by a small, small margin as well. But to then go on to the podium, I mean, I hadn't even won a battle yet, let alone suddenly going through from top 32 to being second place on the podium. Um, taking that step up, I, I felt like I was in a dream. I didn't even feel like I was there. And it's unlike me to be lost for words. And the um, guy that ran the competition come up with a microphone. It's like, oh, would you like to say a few words? And I could barely speak. I, it was like I was having an out of body experience. I was like, what's going on? Like, I'm standing here, but is this really happening? And then the most embarrassing part is I never expected to get a podium, so I'd never done the champagne practice. So it got to the point where everyone's like shaking the champagne, getting ready to spray me. And uh, I'm sitting there shaking it and I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. So I've got absolutely soaked whilst I'm still trying to open this champagne bottle. And someone's actually had to show me how to do it before I can then soak everyone else. And so embarrassing, but it's something that I learned now, <laughs> luckily for when I get a next podium. So my greatest achievement um, in Drift Cup was obviously coming second place. Uh, dream come true, literally still can't believe that happened. Just to get a podium, I was over the moon. Um, another trophy I got was the hard charger one. So that's when unfortunately I had the crash uh, with Mark Webb, but you know, I carried on going despite the state of my car. I didn't give up and after a free one more time, um, that's when I kind of felt like I deserved this. <laughs> And then the final one is um, I actually had to go at Podkana. Um, wasn't expected to even compete that day. I was actually working there, but last minute I got asked to enter and I managed to come third. So very surprised at that, but it was great fun. So um, with the drift scene, it is quite funny. There's a lot of banter in there involved. Um, everyone is very competitive, but everyone has a laugh with everyone as well. Um, and the good thing about that is I had some new setups done on my car. So I went into the final round in 2016 in Driftland with a new setup. So I was kind of feeling my car and learning my car again. And the funny thing was I then uh, went to battle someone called Mark Webb and uh, he's the biggest banter guy out of the whole series, we think. Um, so after being told we were going to be battling each other, um, he was giving me loads of grief, just having a laugh with me before I went out. And I was then more determined than ever to try and beat him. Unfortunately, though, in the first corner, um, I think I just had a bit of a mistake. I had a bit of understeer. And um, as we've come round, we've kind of knocked each other. 
Um, luckily, Mark took this really well because, as I said, we, he did give me a bit of abuse before we went out. Um, so we got out, hugged it out, but um, my car was actually really badly damaged. But we both wanted to continue to battle, which is good. And um, I actually ended up getting the Hard Charger Award because we had free one more time. So despite my car being an absolute stay, um, poor Mark's car wasn't in great condition either. We kept battling it out because we were both so determined to go through. Um, and we were taking it like how, how like we were both having a laugh with each other at the same time um, but Mark actually went through in the end but it was the best entertainment that Driftland had seen for ages I mean after we were both getting compliments saying that you know when drifting always goes right sometimes you want something to go a bit wrong you know it's uh, all about the entertainment factor as well. Luckily, when competing in drifting, um, being female, um, it was quite big news that there was uh, another female driver competing. So social media went crazy over it, which was amazing for me because it meant my name got out there more. And uh, from that, I actually had Santa Pod Raceway contact me to do some drift demos. Uh, this was literally a dream come true. It's something I always wanted to do. It's my chance to create my own little show and uh, show off in front of people that had supported me or big shows what I can actually do. I was also approached to um, take part in stunt driver Ben Collins' DVD. I kind of drive in, get to do a donut around him, and as I get out, I'm uh, kind of introduced to him and I get to tell him about the new mission, um, let him know a little bit about drifting. And then uh, he gets in my car, so I get to drift around a little bit, take him to a hangar, where I then introduce him to other pro drifters, which then go on to teach him how to drift. Having Ben Collins in the car obviously is very intimidating. <laughs> um, I was very nervous, but I also knew this was my chance to really show what I could do. And also he did say to me, we're a one hit wonder here. We don't want, you know, tire marks or repeats. So no pressure, but get it right first time. And uh, that kind of gave me the little bit of a confidence boost that I needed to nail this. And um, yeah, doing the kind of demo that I needed to do and uh, the drifting I had with him in the car, he was very complimentary after. and. Oh, that just made my year. <laughs> so at the end of 2016, um, I had a phone call to invite me to an interview. Um, I had no idea what it was about. Um, it was kind of top secret. So I went feeling very nervous and really unprepared because I didn't really know what I was going for. But it ended up being for Fast and Furious Live. Um, it was quite funny. They literally opened up a laptop and showed um, what it was all about. And I just remember my face lighting up thinking, wow. So um, that's when I realised that actually I was uh, being interviewed um, along with 2,000 other applicants for a potential stunt driving role. Um, I felt like the interview went quite well because I'm usually quite good at interacting with people. but. They were asking about certain skill sets and um, I felt like I had the drifting side but they were talking about front wheel drive as well and I thought, you know, I've got to be honest here, I can't just suddenly pretend I'm a pro at front wheel drive as well. So I was really unsure on how it went. I felt like that I got along with everyone but I wasn't too sure I had maybe the full skill set that they were after. So I left feeling like it probably won't go any further. Um, so two months later I actually got a phone call um, inviting me to a driving audition when I was honest in my interview saying that, you know, I had real wheel drive experience but not front wheel, I kind of assumed that they were only going to be after real wheel drive for me. So uh, turning up at the driving audition, I was very, very nervous. I thought this is all a little bit more real now. And we had to go doing a, a real wheel drive routine. Um, and although I was confident in a real wheel drive, I wasn't used to learning routines as such. And uh, that was the biggest challenge for me, actually, was just remembering where I was going and what I was doing. But managed to nail that, I felt. I felt like it went really, really well. But <laughs> then they suddenly got us all in a front wheel drive car and they wanted us to do the same sort of thing. Um, and I, to be honest, never even done a handbrake turn in a front wheel drive car before. So I was trying to learn very, very quickly. And um, they also wanted us to do a J turn, which uh, didn't go too well, I think, the first time, but the second time went better. So although I felt like I was less experienced in front wheel, I guess I was learning quite quick, but I still left the audition thinking, yeah, I'm probably not good enough for what they're needing, um, just literally purely for the front wheel drive um, lack of experience. So I uh, left the auditions with not too much expectations, but had a fun, great day there. So then I actually got a call for a third and final audition. Um, this was a two day audition where everything we'd learnt, we had to put into one. Um, I think there, that's where they actually got to learn people's personalities more. We had some um, interviews done. So it was more seeing if you had the whole package now. Um, 
again, very nervous and kind of really didn't expect to get the job, when, especially when there's 2,000 applicants, that was the last thing I expected. But I did then finally, I think another two months later, got the final call to say um, I was being offered the job. Words can't describe the feeling. Like, I think I actually screamed on the phone. <laughs> I was that surprised. Um, all my dreams come true in one go to finally now be able to say I'm a full-time stunt driver doing literally my dream job is the best feeling in the world. So in preparation for the shows, we actually had a, a very intense 16 week training course and um, that got us used to various different cars, learning routines, um, which we had to build up on because we'd go from learning just a one minute routine to then up to eight minute routine, start with one car in the in a routine and then add on you know two three four other cars so it's just getting everyone to get used to spatial awareness making sure everyone knew where they were well where they needed to be at what time so it really was just building up all the kind of skills we had but progressing them further ready for the shows on the opening night at the o2 um wow the nerves were overwhelming um i know we'd done so much training and practicing but I'm also quite aware that nerves can affect your driving a little bit, so I was extremely nervous. I was so worried about maybe messing up or forgetting the routine or just something. Um, so before going out, literally my heart was coming out my chest. I felt physically, physically sick. Um, but the minute you've done your routine and you're kind of leaving the stage door, it is the best feeling in the world. You know, a bit of relief, but also knowing that it's gone well, you've achieved what you've always wanted to be able to achieve and you knew everything there and then was just all made worthwhile, it was the best feeling ever. I literally wouldn't change anything. Um, I mean, I worked seven days a week, missed out on a lot of uh, a social life, shall I say, but it's all been so worthwhile. I'm now doing a job that I love, literally my dream job. Um, so everything that's happened, I felt like it's progressed me and it's all happened for a reason, even the crashing and stuff like that. It's all happened for a reason because it's made me a better person or a better driver. So I literally wouldn't take back anything at all.